Welcome back. You're watching today, and we've all had someone warn us that cracking your knuckles leads to arthritis, or that sleeping with wet hair will give you a cold. But is there any truth to any of that? I've been wondering this over the weekend. Mm. So here to separate fact from fiction is today medical expert Dr. Nick Coatsworth. Doc, you have pressing things to do today, but this is <laughs> this is very important it because is. we've been arguing all morning. Yeah. Let's settle this once and for all. <laughs> will cracking your knuckles? Oh, oh yeah. Give you arthritis. Can't crack them anymore. <laughs> Oh, that was a good crack. I, I was going to try and do it, but I... Oh, oh, ow. Yeah, I think I've got arthritis hurt. already. No, it it won't. It won't, Carlos. It won't, Sarah. That is absolutely fiction. What it will do is really annoy the person sitting next yeah. to you, though. I think most people crack their knuckles to get the effect of what happens to people around them when that horrible yeah. sound emanates from yeah, their Yeah, we'll hands. do this one here. Give me oh, a okay, hand. Let's Give try. me a hand for a second. You ready for No, this? not my thumb. Go for that finger. <laughs> OK, you ready? Yeah, you've just got to pull your finger. No. <laughs> Oh, I got oh, it! Go on! You go on! Yeah. That was good. You can injure yourself, though, guys. Yeah, you yeah. can't get arthritis, but there have been documented <laughs> case reports of people injuring themselves and dislocating their fingers. All right, here's one from the schoolyard. If you drop food on the floor, it's the three second rule, right? Or five second? Five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, so, Carlos, this entirely depends on how good the food is. If it's really, really good food, you can wait for up to 10 to 15 seconds. If it's oh. just awful food and your mum's packed you a bad sandwich, just uh, just throw it away. So I reckon uh, I reckon that's fiction as well, unfortunately. It also depends where it lands, surely. All right, well, some so people... So Harper was... We were on the beach the other day. <laughs> yeah, what Harper happened? dropped a bit of pie and I just picked it up straight in the gob. Was it just a bit of sand? Yeah, yeah just that's a fine. Bit With of roughage. Sand. Bit of roughage. <laughs> <laughs> Makes them stronger, eh, Nick? <laughs> All right, well, some people freak out about this one. Do public toilet seats oh, carry yeah. infections and diseases? Ugh, yuck. OK, so it says this is actually, this is a really interesting one because yeah. people do freak out about it. Yes. It's, a, it's a theoretical fact, actually. So, theoretically, they can carry diseases, oh. but there's been studies done to show that they are very, very seldom transmitted. You know, during COVID-19, there was this whole debate about if someone with COVID went to a public toilet yeah. and there wasn't a seat to put down, whether whether it would aerosolise the COVID when you flushed the loo. That's how, that's how scared people were. <laughs> Were about public nice. toilets, but I, I can I can reassure you that as an infectious disease physician, I'm completely comfortable using public toilets. How when was the last time you used a public <laughs> toilet? Get off it! What in in Parliament in Parliament House this morning? Let's about stop okay. <laughs> Right now we've got um, this topic of toilets is is a pressing one. We've mm -hmm. all had our parents tell us um, it's bad to hold on to you, you know, when you got to go. <laughs> um, what is the verdict on that? Yeah. 100% fact. So Ooh. the problem here is, Carl, that if you... I mean, the body's designed to get rid of, of, of stagnant water and that's what urine is, and if you don't get rid of it, then the bacteria can multiply. So I think particularly for women, but yeah. equally for men, if you do have the urge, then, you know, listen to your body and go because urinary tract infections, it is a real problem and you've, uh, you've got to have the right behaviours to, to, to stop that sort of thing. Don't, don't hold on. OK. All right, well, sleeping with wet hair, a lot of people think that it gives you a cold, but as somebody who sleeps with wet hair almost every single night, that is surely a furphy. Look, I don't, I, don't, I don't get why people sleep with wet hair. Like, what do you have you to do? You can have a shower in the long. evening or dry it. Yeah, it OK, well, fair enough. It's a lot of well, hair Well, fortunately here. for you, Stairs, it's fiction. Told it's you. fiction. Uh, if, if, if you go to sleep with wet hair, you, you're not you're not going to get a get I, a cold. I it's didn't even good. need a doctor's certificate for that. Like I just know. I take my hair off at night. <laughs> the, the bill's in the mail. The bill's in the mail. <laughs> put it next to That's me. good. So, yeah. We're going to have to throw hey, some more guy. questions at you. <laughs> uh, it's the Ray Martin. Happy, happy to do it, guys, any time. Thank you, buddy. Children are among the highest in the world, with a new report suggesting the National Disability Insurance Scheme could be affecting the growing number of people both seeking and receiving the diagnosis. Here to tell us more is New South Wales AMA President, Dr Michael Bonning in, uh, in Sydney. Good morning to you, Doctor, and thanks for joining us. What more can you tell us about this report and its findings? What this report has shown us, is it's, it's not yet peer reviewed and it's a piece of research which is showing the rising rates in uh, autism diagnosis. And what that necessarily means is um, <clears throat> organisations, including the government, have a look at these things. They want to understand why there is a, a change in the rate of diagnosis. And Australia has broadly mirrored um, 
the growth in uh, of autism diagnosis in places like Japan. So we are not alone in the significant growth in autism diagnoses, but it has been a significant change over the last 20 years. So is this because children are being more diagnosed with autism or are they being wrongly diagnosed? Um, or is the NDS making it easier for kids who need a diagnosis just to get one? The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, which is kind of our premier reporting body, we, we talk about five different uh, things that are probably contributing. So greater awareness, the and that's probably the primary reason with the awareness of autism and our understanding of it. The changing diagnostic criteria by clinicians changing and becoming broader and including more mild presentations of autism. Definitely the increasing availability of services, which is the NDIS, as, as you speak of, David, which when there are services more readily available, that's encouraging more people to seek a diagnosis. And then we've got two that are much more minor, which include the increase in parental age, which we think accounts for less than 3% of the rise in autism prevalence, and also advances in neonatal medicine. We know that uh, extremely premature infants who are more likely to be kept alive and go on to live uh, to, into adulthood uh, have increased in potentially increased rates of autism mm. so all of those things go together mm. to kind of drive this uh this rising diagnosis which of which access to the ndis is probably one factor okay so a, a review of the scheme is likely to recommend that participation in the ndis will be de determined by their level of functional impairment do you welcome this or is that problematic Look, I think that's really difficult. Um, what, what we talk about when we talk about, you know, one person's version of functional impairment is very, very different to another's. And what we know is that we want to have inclusive environments that support people with disabilities and, and differing forms of ability to, to seek education, to work, to live to their, you know, fullest uh, expectations of, of, of their life. And that's something that we need to look at as a whole society. And we know from the findings of the Disability Royal Commission that that is what Australia is pushing towards. Michael, while we have you, uh, also making news, the government is now setting to slash the amount of nicotine allowed in pharmaceutical vapes from early next year. I is this a good move? Look, this is a great move. This is something we have been actively campaigning on. I, I met with the TGA only a few weeks ago about this consultation and decision process. What we know is that the higher you make the um, nicotine uh, concentration in vapes, the more likely we are to keep people uh, addicted for longer in the prescription model, um, but also the, the factors of risk of things like accidental poisonings and overdoses goes up dramatically. So dropping the rate uh, and concentration of nicotine in vapes is a very, very good option. There's also a push to put more support systems in place for teens who are addicted to vapes. How will that, how will that work? The, the focus of the, the vaping organisations and companies has been on younger people. You know, we, we see it everywhere. We, we have to question why do vape shops pop up around the corner from schools all the mm. time? You know, all of those things are about the problem. And then what we need to see is that when we have young people who are addicted to nicotine, we need appropriate counselling services, support services. The quit line, which has been the focus of um, adult support services probably isn't quite right for, for young people. We need people with lived experience talking to them about coming off nicotine. We need um, social media and other campaigns that support that. We need reach out services that speak to young people in a way that they feel comfortable with so that they can get the support they need. You need influencers who are going to talk about not who've had nicotine addictions to do yeah. podcasts and talk to people directly on TikTok. That's what you need. Excellent. Dr Michael Absolutely. Bonning, we, uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Hey there today fans. Sarah and <laughs> what's my name again oh Carl <laughs> hey thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel though subscribe now for more news special reports and amazing Aussie stories and Carl misbehaving Whoa, of course that never happens always happens what's she talking about